Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Postmates. You can get $100 of free delivery credit in your first seven days by downloading the app and using our code NO. Thank you, Postmates. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Inside Anthem. No, no, it's Inside Gaming oh, right. Daily. Right. Yeah, and it's Clap Monday, by the way. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Clap Monday, come on. We got the clap now. And if you got the clap, video. please go see your doctor. Uh, we're doing another story on Anthem. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, uh, but please don't worry. Based on this story, we won't be doing Anthem stories for much longer. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, nobody will be doing much of anything with Anthem for much longer because super early sales numbers show it may be one of the biggest bombs in recent history. Oh, no, but everything was going so well for Anthem until now, right, Lawrence? Yeah. No. Really? Oh. No. This is a real blindside. Boy, <laughs> yeah, the bad news for Anthem is it only sold half the physical copies in the UK that Mass Effect Andromeda did. Oh boy. Not worldwide, just the UK. Sure. Mm. But this is the first data we've gotten, so mm. we're gonna pounce on it and really play with it, just like a little a little uh, yarn ball with a cat. So you're saying that Anthem maybe just needed some of those awkward gifts with like frozen faces, just sales a little bit? <laughs> I love those. Yeah. Autumn, mean, show the mush mouth. I love that mush mouth. <laughs> Much like that face. Andromeda had its own set of launch issues too during its launch week in 2017. It only did half the sales of Mass Effect 3. Half, half and half. Yeah, so a quarter of Mass Effect that's, 3. That's exponential loss. Yeah, yeah so put that into context for us, Lawrence. Actually, I'm curious. Oh boy, okay, so first of all, we need to add some caveats. We're only talking about physical copies sold, and again, just in the UK. Oh, okay. So physical sales have been declining for years now. These stats don't count digital sales via the Xbox or PlayStation stores, and also, of course, on EA's premier digital platform, Origin. Right. Still, it's not great, uh, and it shows a lot of gamers are passing on Anthem, at least in its first week. Which is not surprising because it's not done. And uh, let's not forget, it's only been about 30 seconds since the last Anthem punch of the gut. So here's another. <laughs> uh, Eurogamer and others reported that Anthem's opening weekend physical sales were lower than both Kingdom Hearts 3 and Resident Evil 2, both of which released earlier this year and appealed to mostly weebs. <laughs> <laughs> As for one of its more direct competitors, Destiny 2, Anthem sold about a quarter of what Destiny 2 did in 2017. So how much yeah. did Anthem actually sell, La Dog? Yeah, the, the reports that we're getting all give relative figures, which is kind of a, it's a weird new thing in sales to not give hard numbers anymore. Publishers just don't do it. But here at Inside Gaming, we deal in hard facts. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when I'm starting to pound the table, you know it's serious. So we found some uh, some figures via Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad that we can extrapolate a little bit with. Uh, so posting on Reset Era, Ahmad said that Anthem sold 10% as much as the original Destiny did back in 2014. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. But that was in the UK, correct? And that's yeah, UK? Is that okay, physical? Keep that in mind. Physical. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Destiny 1 sold about 417,000 physical copies in the UK back then, which means Anthem is close to 42,000 now. Oof. Which okay. is real bad. But physical. Physical? That was five years ago. It has been 2014, declining. 2019. Yeah. Physical but we here at Inside Gaming figured that too. So, uh, <laughs> I've been here for like a week. <laughs> so as for digital sales, those weren't released, but we do know this, and this is just a broad stat, that about 80% of game sales in the UK are now digital. Oh, okay. Which means Anthem mm. might have sold around 168,000 digital copies for a total of 210,000 copies in its first opening week in the UK. Uh, while the UK isn't the biggest gaming market, it's not inconsequential either. According to researcher Nuzu, the UK is the sixth biggest market for gaming, hmm. behind China, the US, Japan, South Korea, and Germany. Nine. As for why this happened, it's not a huge mystery. <laughs> not at all, no. no. Reviews of Anthem are still trickling in, and they're not any better than the ones from last week. Yeah. The PC version has a 60 on Metacritic. Oof. That is based on 42 reviews as oh, of this recording. That's really bad. Metacritic calls that score mixed, but in this era, when most games seem to score in the 70s and 80s, 60 is not good. People have found bright spots, though, uh, and the game has its fans. Yeah, I like it. Uh, uh, but on the whole, reviewers are saying that it feels uh, buggy and unfinished, especially in the content area. I mean, isn't the game the content area? Yeah, it's kind of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty. People spent so much time on those trees and those waterfalls. They did. Oh. I mean, obviously, this is a trend for a lot of games. We talk yeah. about this all the time to release in a less than completed state and then get fixed over time. Yeah. No Man's Sky, Fallout 76, Sea of Thieves, Battlefront 2, all of those games. Honestly, it makes the community really angry for a long time. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're asking 60 bucks yeah. for something that is obviously obviously not market ready. Yeah. And, it, and it's totally a play against people's goodwill. Mm -hmm. Just like, let's put it out there, get whatever money we can. It is. And then we'll just figure it out. Is this just the, the world we're, we're in now where it's okay because at least in their, the eyes of the publishers, they're talking about the game. And then that way, when it gets updated, it still makes the news, so it's free press. Does, that, does that work? I think I think it's mostly in the eyes of the publishers. We need to get some kind of money back right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're too much in the hole, and any, any money is worth some bad press for a while. People mm -hmm. get over it because somebody will say the N-word and they'll all forget about it. <laughs> They're not wrong. And then a year from now, when you patch the game and you, you have a new banner update, it's Anthem Reloaded, boom. Now we have another player class and we added an area and there's yeah, half yeah. the loading screens and everybody's like, it's done now. And then we'll be back here 
a year from now, I mean, like, telling you to buy it for 30 bucks. I, I get it though, people love an underdog story, but Rocky didn't go play in traffic and then show up to the fight three days early. <laughs> and everyone, yay. Like, I think Anthem's coming at a weird time right now because yeah. uh, I think it's at the end of this like, buying loop where everyone's like, you know, like, oh, well, no problem, we'll pay for Destiny as a service, we'll pay for No Man's Sky, whatever, as a service, but eventually people are gonna get upset and frustrated with that whole thing, and I think Anthem is probably the poster child for that. Maybe, I mean, it's probably better than apathy, though, from a lot of people's eyes, that's true, so. That's true. Yeah, and at this time, consumers have probably decided to stay away, yeah. uh, which pretty much sucks for any game, but especially one that was planned as being the next big games as a service game, which I'm sure you're very tired of hearing about. Yeah, EA and Bioware seem like they want to emulate Destiny and Destiny 2, but both those games also had major content issues and kind of bad launches too. So yeah. like, there were a lot of people upset with that. Nowadays, people seem to just be running out of patience, yeah. especially since Destiny 2 is still going strong yeah. and there are free options like Fortnite and Apex Legends to occupy your time, which is also an origin. So what are the stakes yeah. for Anthem? One former Bioware employee said that it's not a make or break game for the studio, but there's no question that there are big expectations for this game. <laughs> that was also the developer that had retired from the studio. Yeah, he was like, oh no, I, they'll be fine. And he was yeah. long gone. <laughs> My paychecks are great. What are yeah. you talking about? Dude, uh, <laughs> retirement is great for me. I, I imagine things over there are great too. That's what they tell me. Ever since Mass Effect Andromeda got a mixed reception in 2017, Bioware almost immediately pivoted to Anthem. Yeah, and for the last year or so, Bioware and EA have been in full hype mode for Anthem, true. calling it a new direction for the studio. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. uh, EA executives have said they expect it to sell between five and six million copies by the end of March, which is just about a month away. So based on these UK sales, it's hard to see Anthem really hitting that mark at all. So what does this mean overall for EA, Lawrence? Well, it's, it's the natural presumption is that EA is just gonna shut down Bioware, which no. is not something any of us wanna see. They've yeah. been around for a long time, they've made a number of amazing franchises. But this is EA we've, we're talking about, and they've historically been willing to close studios immediately with underperforming games. They shut down the Maxis studio after the online version of SimCity in 2013 <laughs> didn't perform that was well. A terrible launch. Black Box was closed in 2008. Visceral Games was closed in 2017. Oh, Hardline! This is before their Star Wars game even came out. Oh, uh, yeah. They shut down Criterion after Blur. PopCap is a whisper now. EA has a, has a, a legacy of smothering developers that don't immediately hit those numbers that they want, but. We could be seeing a kinder, gentler EA in 2018. Mm. Titanfall 2 wasn't a hit, but EA kept Respawn on, gave them another chance, and they got Apex Legends yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And whatever Star Wars game they're working on. Star Wars is a good point too. They stuck around with Battlefront 2 even after the microtransactions controversy, and everyone hated that game at launch. And people have said that it's bounced back and turned around. That it's actually a pretty decent game now that they ripped the microtransaction bullshit out of it. So, yeah, right. so while EA definitely has a legacy of dropping the executioner's axe right after a failure. Recent events showed that the company might have developed a little more patience. That's good. Kind of like when your abusive dad goes to counseling after you go away to college and he, you go back home and he's like, you can actually talk to him now and he doesn't start yelling at you about responsibility and <laughs> republicanism. Wow. He's just watching House Hunters. He chilled. We went from being able to talk with a minute without yelling at each other to about 15 minutes without yelling That's at each other. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah, that's it only gets good. better as you get older, I guess. That's fine. <laughs> my mom told me last night that my grandpa went to China and my grandma said, I'm not going with you to China. So that's... Relationships can improve. <laughs> As for the other half of this relationship, back to video games, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, analysts are <laughs> mixed about how much Anthem could hurt EA uh, if it ends up tanking. Uh, Michael Pachter told CNBC that EA made a mistake when they let reviews of the PC version of the game come out early. Hmm. Uh, that's because Origin subscribers got to play it a week before the February 22nd release. Date. I was playing at the beginning of February, and man, was it garbage. You were a mistake. Uh, Pachter said he felt like the console reviews would be about 10 points higher on average. He added that poor reviews for Anthem are consistent with EA's poor execution all year. Boom! Yeah, no, I mean, he's right. Guillaume? 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 Fernandez? That's French, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, but Guillaume Fernandez. Is that right? Yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah, but Guillaume Fernandez, no. But Guillaume Fernandez. <laughs> Man, a market consultant for New Zoo said there's no immediate cause for concern for EA. He added that not every game will be a hit. Yeah, he told CNBC that, quote, many of EA's revenues are generated by extremely popular yearly iterations, such as its sports titles. As we always forget. Lawrence, <laughs> yeah. what do they got over there? FIFA, Madden, Woo! sports, <laughs> balls, balls and sports. The exact microtransaction stuff that everyone gets mad at EA about is in those games to the nth degree and it makes them so much money. Yeah. In 2017, it was reported that just Ultimate Team in FIFA makes EA Eight hundred million dollars every year. Jeez, yeah. Just ultimate. Just for selling messy cards with like stars on them. That's it. Fucking. That's shit. awesome. I know you guys are worried about EA, but one bomb, <laughs> one bomb's not gonna kill them. Oh, yeah. uh, even if it's a high profile bomb like yeah. yeah. Obviously things are very early right now for Anthem, but the first month of a game is still really important, right? Yeah. yeah this could also yeah. be a case of gamers waiting to see if Anthem's issues get fixed, or if it'll be abandoned by EA and Bioware. If things get better, 
Maybe we'll see more people jumping on board. I don't know. The other thing to consider, I guess, is that Apex Legends could be helping Anthem in some weird way, huh. at least in the short term, because of its success, it's kind of helping EA's bottom line. So maybe there's not quite as much pressure on Anthem to perform, at least at first. Oh, that's a, that's yeah. a good point. Uh, based on recent history, EA could be playing the long game with Anthem, betting that all its issues will be sorted out in a few months and the game will find its audience. Yeah, either way, EA is gonna do what EA always does, Look out for itself. It's a company. <laughs> yeah. And it makes money. Yeah, and uh, with that, trucks of FIFA money are still rolling in every goddamn day. And Apex, unexpected success. Uh, odds are, we're gonna have a few couple more years left uh, with a monkey on our back. With a big yeah. EA monkey on our back. How big is that EA monkey, Lawrence? It's, it's titan. It's nothing but soccer balls and Madden balls. <laughs> My guess is Anthem means nothing to them. I don't, well, they probably spent, what, $200 million in this game? It's their little art student who went to Caltech for a little bit <laughs> like, and said, it's yeah. Okay. Hey, you know what? Maybe the robot didn't work, but we'll buy you a new car. Go back to the lab. They got 1,800 John Maddens growing in tubes. Yeah. <laughs> got to decompress another Production, one. production, production. <laughs> That'll do it for today's Inside Gaming. We're going to go back to the lab and see if we can't find something to talk about tomorrow that isn't <laughs> Anthem. Maybe PewDiePie will find a new racial story. Something, anything, please. <laughs> any any big YouTubers out there, say something. <laughs> oh, they will. Yeah, and then apologize for it. <laughs> they will, they will. God. I am so sorry. <laughs> Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Postmates. If you're not familiar with Postmates, it's basically an app that allows you to order anything. And by anything, I mean pretty much anything. That's chicken nuggets whenever you want. It's a bottle of red wine when you really need one. It's sushi at 9 p.m. or a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m. Postmates allows you to sit at home and play video games all day, which is what we're all about here. You just need a little disposable income to, uh, to get it to you. And nothing makes you feel like a king or queen than having McDonald's french fries delivered to you without you having to move at all. It's great. You do have to go to the door. Or I guess if, you, if you're really exacting, you can just leave in liner notes. Just throw it through the window. And then you can crawl over there and grab it without having to get up. That's living, that's living the 2019 life and that's what we at Inside Gaming would empower you to do. We also have a promo code for you. Postmates is giving you $100 of free delivery credit in your first seven days. If you download the app and use our code NO, K-N-O-W, that's no for $100 of free delivery credit in your first seven days. So thank you, Postmates, for delivery. Thank you for enabling me to live my perfect life. Thank you, Postmates. And isn't as good. So it's like the <laughs> mecha version of PUBG, basically. <laughs> also, why are you named Anthem? Do we have to stand for you? Actually, Anthem kind of makes me want to kneel. Not to make a political statement, I just want to honor BioWare's final game. Oh. Same. Oh. Anthem, it's got a hub world that looks straight 